In our final section for this chapter, we want to take a look at what the long run industry supply curve looks like for firms operating under perfect competition. Remember that the short run industry supply curve was the area of the marginal cost curve above the minimum of the AVC curve, and that's where the shutdown conditions became a little bit apparent. However, as we transition over to the long run, the industry supply curve is also going to change its shape as well. So there are three different shapes that the industry supply curve can take in the long run, and it is associated with economies and diseconomies of scale, the concepts that we built up in the previous chapter. So we want to see exactly as industry output changes, how exactly do the price of resources change as well? So are they going to face higher prices or lower prices? So three different types of supply curves in this instance. So let's go ahead and build them up. And the first shape that our supply curve can take in the long run is going to deal with the increasing cost industry. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of that. Increasing, increasing cost industry. And like the name implies, the increasing cost industry tells us that the firm or industry is going to face higher prices and costs. So here in industry, and once again, we're taking a look at things in the long run. So an industry in the long run that faces higher prices and costs, that faces higher prices, higher prices and costs as output expands, as industry output, output expands. So once again, an increasing cost industry tells us that it's an industry in the long run that faces higher prices and costs as industry output expands. And what type of scales is this going to be associated with? Is it economies, diseconomies, or constant returns to scale? If you remember from the previous chapter, you know that this is going to be associated with diseconomies of scale, associated with diseconomies of scale, diseconomies of scale. And remember what diseconomies of scale told us? It told us that as we increase output, our costs are going to go up. So here, that's exactly mimicking what the increasing cost industry is telling us. And anytime we have an increasing cost industry, we're going to notice that the long run supply curve, so SLR right here, is going to be increasing, is increasing. It's going to have a upward slope, a positive slope in this instance. So here, the increasing cost industry, and we notice that, hey, our supply curve in the long run is going to be increasing or has a positive slope. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like for us in application. Example of this is going to be where we have demand for key inputs, such as star players, as in football. We also see this in terms of rare commodities, so gold and silver as well. Those would be some type of uh, examples of an increasing cost industry. So here, take a look at the supply and demand curves that we have right here. We start off at D0 and S0, this intersection right here, where we have equilibrium prices in quantity. However, suppose that for some reason demand within this industry is going to increase, and it doesn't really matter what the uh, what the shock is going to be. We just have an increase in demand that causes us to have a new intersection point at B, and we notice that prices are going to increase. However, as prices increase, more and more firms are earning profits now because we're still working under perfect competition. But as more firms earn profits, what does that do? It incentivizes new firms to want to enter into the industry. So as new firms enter into the industry, we have a supply shift outwards away from the origin. And then we finally reach point C, which is our final equilibrium. And what do we notice at point C? At point C, we notice that, hey, our industry output has, has increased compared to point A. So, hey, yes, quantity has increased. But what has happened to our prices? We also notice that our prices have increased compared to point A once again. So when we connect these points from point A to point C, we notice that, hey, because output expanded, our cost and prices have increased, our long run supply curve is going to be upward sloping. So we are working under an increasing cost industry. We have this economy, this economy of scale. Next, we go ahead and take a look at a decreasing cost industry. So just the opposite of an increasing cost industry, the decreasing cost industry. So decreasing cost industry. And in terms of the decreasing cost industry, we just change everything to the opposite case when compared to the increasing cost industry. So this is going to be an industry in the long run, in the long run, 
that faces lower prices and costs as industry output in expands. So that faces lower prices, lower prices and costs as industry output expands. As industry output expands. And what type of scales is that going to be associated with? Not surprisingly, it's going to be associated with economies of scale. As we increase output, prices get lower. So associated with economies of scale. And you don't want to confuse this one with the decreasing cost industry. So here, even though decreasing cost industry, you think that things are going to be going down, economies of scale does mean that same thing. So don't say decreasing cost industry with this economies of scale or increasing cost industry with economies of scale. You do want to stay consistent. And with all of this, we notice that our long run supply curve is going to be decreasing. So it has a negative slope. And once again, we can do the same exact process that we did with the increasing cost industry as we move from point A to B to C. And that's going to be on the graph on the right-hand side right here. With a decreasing cost industry, the tech industry would be a pretty good example of a decreasing cost industry. As we go from point A to B, remember higher prices, more firms are going to want to enter into the industry. And that shifts our supply curve over down here. And at point C, how does point C compare with our point A equilibrium? We notice that as output expands, our costs and prices are going to be lower. So as we connect the dots from point A to point C, we notice that our supply curve in the long run is going to be downward sloping. It has a negative slope in this instance. So here, two different cases of our supply curves in the long run. Finally, we take a look at constant scales or constant, the constant cost industry. And once again, we follow the same process as before. So take a look at the constant cost industry. Constant cost industry. And with the constant cost industry, once again, as an industry, as in the long run, an industry, in the long run, in the long run, that faces constant prices, that faces constant prices and costs as industry output expands, as industry output expands. So once again, the key operating word here is going to be constant or not changing a lot in terms of prices and cost. This is going to be associated, not surprisingly, with constant returns to scale. Associated with constant returns to scale. Constant returns to scale. And then finally here, we notice that the long run supply curve is going to be horizontal, horizontal, meaning that, hey, the prices are going to exactly remain the same. Once again, same analysis as before, as we shift from point A to point B to point C, we compare point A to C with one another. And as output expands, we notice that it's going to have the same exact prices as before. And as we said, franchises and pharmacies, they tend to be constant cost industries or firms that operate under constant cost industries. So three different shapes of our long run supply curve. It really depends on the type of scales that we talked about in the previous chapter. We have increasing cost industry, which is associated with economies, uh, which is associated with this economies of scale. We have the decreasing cost industry, which is associated with economies of scale and the constant cost industry, which is related to constant returns to scale. And as we notice, upward sloping, downward sloping, and a horizontal line for our supply curve in the long run. With all this in mind, this will wrap up this chapter number eight, where we talked about perfect competition, our very first type of market structure. We will go ahead and take a closer look at our next market structure with the monopoly, where there is the least amount of uh, competition, where there's the most market power. So how exactly does a monopoly maximize its profits compared to a perfect competitor? We'll get into all those details in the next chapter. Great work for this chapter. I'll see you guys next time.